Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Hexes Force! Let's explore the Temple of Palfina now that we have the ability to go around without having to fight monsters. You seem to be energetic enough to me. Hmm? Oh, I don't think it matters what you... how you answer her. Got the fate of the world on my shoulders, but I feel fine. However the song goes. I'm glad you're saving the world and not me. Wait a minute. You're not qualified for this job. Uh, we're screwed. The goblins built it. Why not set it on fire and call it a day? Oh, wait. No, that's another game. But anyway, yeah. Just like well, any other RPG. You walk around... Well, you can talk to people, and sometimes they have side quests, or background information, or whatnot. I think they do a reasonable job with the NPCs in the game. Maybe not extraordinary, like Radiant Historia, but still reasonable. They tell you things about what's going on. It's maybe not pertinent to you, but well, it does a little bit of world building there. And if you get stuck talking to one, well, you can just... Uh, fast forward through the dialogue with the R button there. So, yeah, I love how they do that in the game. Okay, so anyway, we gotta go to the dorms in order to progress with the plot. We gotta get all of Cecilia's things. Or Cece, as they call her. Shankuria? Something like that? I don't know. But anyway, if you go around here, search the bookshelf, you get a hidden treasure! The Blazing Recipe. It's our first recipe in the game. Uh, later on, we will get the ability to do some cooking, and that's a recipe for it. It's basically another way of crafting, besides equipment, and I'll go over that when we have the ability to do so, but get some more treasure there. Nice. You can never have enough treasure. And let's go into the dorms, then. Now, with all these uh, items that I'm getting, the crafting items, someone was asking me, H.C. Bailey, could you just convert those crafting items into force points? And yeah, you could do that. I mean, even the Stardust is a crafting item, but I think it's better just to hold on to them for later because they give so few force points, you might as well hold on to them in case, I don't know, you change your mind or I change my mind or whatever. Stop saying stupid things, Ralu. You're hurting her head. What's that? Oh. Well, I'm sure it's not the key to saving the world. No, actually it's not. But, uh... Oh. Hmm. I wonder what it does. Eh, it's probably not important. Someone else was also asking me, H.C. Bailey, why do you find Ralu so strange when people are teleporting monsters all around here and... Well, you know, the way I look at it, as far as we can tell for in this area, Ralu's the only one of his kind. It's not like, I mean, people teleport all the time. It's magic. But, like, the flying squirrel, I mean, everyone seems to think that's normal. So now that we've packed our things, we can, well, move on with the plot. But before we do that... I want to start the trading side quest. It basically works like the trading side quest in Link's Awakening, where you get an item, you talk to someone else who wants that item, and you trade it to them for a new item, and so on and so forth, until you actually get the good reward, which is way at the end of the game. So, but it is worthwhile. Let's see, if you search around here, you can get some treasure. Green lapises. What is the plural of lapis, anyway? Oh, you know, there's one thing I wanted to show you. And we get some healing herbs. Awesome. Guess what kind of items those are used to craft. But anyway, if you go up here... Hmm, there's a treasure back there, but there's a wall in our way. Whatever shall we do? Well, let's see what we can do there. Huh. You lost? Doesn't seem that big to me. Oh. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, when you get old, viewers, you're 
memory starts to go on you. And I'm only 31 as of this video. But anyway, you pull that lever or switch or whatever you call that thing. I guess it's a lever. Wrong lever! No. No. But yeah, lower this wall here. So now we can get some more treasure. The element wills. Awesome. We'll want to save those for crafting later. Let's pull this switch. Hmm. I wonder where that water came from. Well, anyway, now I want to uh, backtrack upstairs, so I'll just be right back. Okay, we're back. Now that we've got all our things from the dorms, let's get out of here. Pretty small dorms, if you ask me. Let's see if it's right here. Haha, -ha, we get a holy water, another crafting item. Yeah, they just throw crafting items at you. Hmm? Well, her eyes are open. How do you sleep with your eyes open anyway? I would think that's physically impossible. But I've heard people do that, so... I don't know. It's like a military thing, so... I don't know. But anyway. Well, I'm physically prepared. So how do we get there? Oh, we get some stuff first. Hey, hey, all right. Do 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 do. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of sounds like it to me. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we got a couple new spirit facts there. So we gotta go t along mid midday midi highway. I don't know. <sighs> they sure love using that uh, sprite there. Okay, so this is where they tell you what Ragnafax and Spearfax mean. So yeah, Spearfax are consumable weapons, Ragnafax are permanent weapons. And someone else was also asking me, H.C. Bailey, why bother upgrading your weapons if you're going to get something better in the next town? And, well, it's not the way it works in this game. You don't just buy a, get a weapon, then get to the next town, then buy another weapon, and so on and so forth. No, these weapons are going to last us throughout the whole game. So, yeah, it's totally worth investing in them. Also, let's see, I want to get a little more attack there. Awesome. I can't believe it either, pal. No. I don't know why either. I don't think they ever explain that. Okay, so if you go up here, where is it? Haha! -ha! Get another treasure! Awesome. Let's see, I thought there was another one around here. No, I'm thinking of something else. Okay, never mind. Okay, let's get out of here then. Let's go over this way. There's some people over here, too. I'll try to go through them efficiently. And one thing about this game is that when you go to a town, like this area, for example, people will be in different spots on different paths. So if you're looking for her on Levant's path, she's actually on the right side of this floor. So they try to throw you off a little bit like that. Hmm? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about her. Zenkberg, huh? I don't, we never see that in the game. I don't know if I like that or not, that they mention a town that you just never go to or something. Huh? Oh, I, I don't... Oh, him. Right. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Force you. Nice pun, game. Well, Cecilia isn't, so why should she? Oh, <laughs> I forgot he said that. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's. I think that's all the NPCs in the temple, so let's go out of the temple now. Okay, so let's search up here to get. Where is it? It's 
around here somewhere. There it is. Hidden treasure! Use that for some crafting later on. We'll definitely want that. Okay, how's it going? Hmm? What do you mean by that? It's not a man... Well, it belonged to someone else, but yeah. Hmm. Sure, let's give it to her. Why not? Hmm? What do you mean? Ooh, a pencil. I'm going to show you how to make this pencil disappear. No. No, that's another movie. But anyway, yeah, so that's how the trading side quest works. We found her who wanted it, and well, now we move on with that. Hmm? What's going on? You didn't see the demons flying around everywhere? How do you miss something like that? It's like not knowing who the Power Rangers are. In the world of the series, that is. It's like we had a massive global alien invasion, and like, people don't know who they are. It's like, what? I don't know. Ha ha. Maybe if you didn't face palm so much. Not that we really need to rest. We got four sites, but that does the job. Hey, okay, how's it going? What do you mean? Hmm, well, remember him for later. Sometimes guys like him won't give you uh, a side quest until later in the game. So it's always a good, good idea to check back with them. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. What is wrong with you? I gotta make that t-shirt one of these days that has that on it. I don't know, maybe... I don't know. My viewers... I don't want my viewers to get beat up because they wore an H.C. Bailey t-shirt or something. <laughs> How's it going? Oh yeah, we did see a lost old lady down there. Huh. Yeah, that is true. Sure, let's help her out. Why not? This is our first side quest in the game. Besides the trading one. I mean, this one actually goes into our log. So we have these side quests and it keeps track of them so we know what to do. We also have the log, the main log here, which tells you what to do if, say, you took a week off from playing the game and you forgot where you were going or what you were doing there. So. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Oh, well, yeah, with all the demons running about, and monsters and all that stuff. But anyway, you search the bench, you get another hidden treasure. Awesome. So, let's see what else we got. Hmm. Well, if you came here earlier, that area in front of us there, that would actually have had some water in it, but we drained it. That's where the water came from. There we get a fresh recipe. Awesome. We'll need that for cooking later. Well, I mean, you can use it for cooking later, is what I mean. Okay. How's it going? Oh. I think if you talk to him with the water up, he'll say something else about how the, he knows they drain the water to clean it or something like that, but more hidden treasure. I hope you like hearing me say that, viewers, because I'm going to be saying that a lot. There's lots of treasure in this game. It's everywhere. It took me a long time to find all of them. Okay, so. Uh, actually, there's a couple more people I can talk to. And then I think that's pretty much all the NPCs, at least. Oh, okay. You would think there'd be something more to her, but she's not. She's just an ordinary lady. Remember this guy for later, too. He has a side quest that we can do. Or was that only on Levant's path? I think Cecilia can get that side quest, too. 
I forget. Busy, busy bumblebees. Okay, how's it going? Hmm? Ah, he's a peddler. Okay, well, remember him for later. We can get, we can do a side quest with him too. So anyway, with, since the fountain is drained, we can go here. Because as we all know, when there's a waterfall, there is always a cave behind it. Absolutely. So anyway, you go up here. Okay, we've got this red chest, which contains a water ring that I'm just going to convert. As a matter of fact, I should be converting all this stuff. So let's do that. And, oh, we got that decoy dial beta from the boss there. That should allow me to get them up to 11. Now, you see how I'm getting four here? Now I'm only get, getting two again. The thing is, is that every 10 levels, it kind of, the amount of attack power you gain per level kind of resets a little bit, then climbs again, then resets and climbs again, and so on. Now, this chest on the left here is what I call a vessel chest, or yellow chest. Uh, it changes its contents depending on what ending you're on track to get. So, right now it's destruction, so we're not going to be able to get much good out of it. But if you wait until later in the game and get the vessel tilting towards creation, then you can actually get something good out of it. So, I'm just going to leave that chest there alone for now. Okay, so, what I need to do is I need to get back to the basement, the first basement level, of the temple there, so I'll meet you guys over there after talking to these two guys. When he's referring to the night, uh, he's referring to that black cloud of smoke that was coming over us. I don't think they ever specifically say that, but it can be inferred, so. Okay, I'll meet you downstairs then. Okay, we're back on the first basement level, so. And let's talk to this guy, who I passed up on earlier, because I wanted to wait until we got Raphael back to do something. Nuts. How hard could they possibly be? Actually, not very hard at all, so, uh, sure, we'll do that. Yeah, you said you're actually going to take on responsibility. That is pretty weird for you. Yeah, she, uh, well, she's not a level one cleric anymore. So, let's go downstairs and try to find that monster. Let's see, this is the survivor's side quest. So, I guess we didn't quite kill them all. Yeah, no matter what you do, the side quest will be here. So it's not like I neglected to kill something. There's whatever. So, let's go on over here. Ah, there it is. You can tell because of the red dot on the map there. That is another thing I like about this game. You can see where monsters are before you get up to them, so let's take them on! For boss time! Against five monies. So, okay. Uh, oh, this is gonna hurt. Ow. Survive one more. You okay? Okay, good, good. Okay, now Ogre Blade, uh, not only is it a defensive attack, it's an area attack. It'll attack not only the one you're targeting, but the two guys next to it as well. So we want to use that on the one in the middle. Okay? But yeah, it's a really nice move, but it does cost a lot. So. These guys are weak to light elemental attacks, by the way. Not that it especially matters. Oh yeah, someone was asking me about overkills. Uh, the way they work is you deal... It's kind of like Final Fantasy X, where you deal more damage in excess of their HP... Or of their max HP, and what? you get slightly more rewards from them, whether it be drops or force points experience, whatever. Although in Final Fantasy X, it doesn't quite work that way. It's like the finishing blow has to be a over a specific amount of HP, even if it's equal to their max HP. So if you just one-shot them, you get the overkill anyway. So it seems kind of weird how they do that there. Here it seems to work more like I would think it does. But it's not really that useful here as it is in Final Fantasy X. I mean, there's a, an achievement you can get for that, and I'll go over achievements when it comes to that, but not right now. Hey, hey, all right, we get a Sano Cane. Uh, what that does is 
Well, not only is it healing, but it also can cure any status ailment, too. So you can keep that if you want. I think it's best just to use it right now. And I'll probably, let's see, I'm probably going to look at some text later on. But uh, for right now, I'll just leave well enough alone. Got to get the room symmetrical. Absolutely. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to actually fill up that fountain again. We'll worry about that chest later. It's going to be a while before its contents will change. But I like how that they, when they have, if they're using chests that change their contents throughout the game, they actually give you a ways of figuring it out. And we'll, I'll go over that more later. But anyway, remember, this is the old lady that we're looking for. So... Yeah, we already talked to her, so... Oh, well, yeah, we were talking to her. Yeah, she's in, sitting pretty lonely, from what I can tell. Okay, let's go! Okay, now this part is a little tricky here. Uh, if you talk to... I'm not entirely sure how this side quest works, because if you screw up somehow, and I don't know what exactly is the cause of it, you can lose track of the grandma by the time you get back to the girl, and there's no indication of this until you get there. Uh, the, the only thing I can think of, and it seems to be reliable, is don't talk to anyone on the way out. For some reason, talking to someone, I guess you get distracted and lose track of the grandma or something on the way back. So, don't do that. Just talk to her, say, hey, we're going to get you out of there. Just walk straight out. Don't even do anything else on the way out. And she'll be there. Either that, or maybe it's a timed side quest. Like, once you talk to her, you have a limited amount of time to get here to return her. I don't know. But just do what I do, and you'll succeed. Now, if you do lose track of her... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, if you do lose track of her, you can go back to where you found her again, and then take her back. But then you don't get as good of a reward from this side quest. So that is one thing I really like about the side quests in this game. There aren't too many of them, and there's not like, kill 10 or 20 of these guys. It's just a quick side quest. Hey, help me out. Boom, get a reward. Move on. So it doesn't drag on forever. Now there we got three mistletoes. If you lost track, of the grandma on the way back, you'd only get one. So you want to watch out for that. Oh, yeah. Okay, that was what I was thinking. Ha ha. Okay, so let's see. We got the fountain filled up. You go over here. You got another harvest point where you can get holy water. So if you want to, you can check that out every now and then, and that'll help you out. But can we cross safely through Midday Highway to get to Nervelle? Find out next time on Let's Play Hexes Force. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.